Glasgow's like ground is like pretty rough. We have a shock as far as the, the terrain goes. It's more like a New York vibe with the style of skating. There's so much new stuff all the time. I've never felt more welcomed by a skate scene. Everybody's sound with each other. You just come out and it's just pure skateboarding. The skate scene in Glasgow is home. I think it like rains every second second. A lot of the time I'd say we have like a like a six month winter. We're a bit more um, weathered. The way the terrain's developed is, is sort of starting to put it on the map in a, in a different way. Recently, skateboarding in Glasgow has been absolutely amazing. Glasgow's uniqueness is in the city, in its architecture, and in the stuff we have to ride here. Like, there's some amazing spots. You can meet up at Goma at the Gallery of Modern Art. That's a hangout spot where you can meet up and skate, or you can go to the Kelvin Grove Art Galleries right next to Kelvin Grove Skate Park where there's little steps and ledges. It's based, it's just flat and there's a curve. And that's that's pretty fun. That's a meet-up spot, and we all meet up, we get warmed up and then we head out into the town for our street missions or whatever we're gonna do. In Glasgow we've also got some sort of the OG traditional spots. Which are, which are just amazing as well. Not somewhere where you tend to find a session. Anywhere in the city centre is good because Glaswegian's like a drink, so it's always a lot of fun. They seem like they're down for anything. I mean, last night I walked down the street and it was just karaoke bar, karaoke bar, karaoke bar. And then there's other spots like the Red Banks, which are really cool, they're like iconic. It's, it's almost like an alien sort of spaceship sort of thing. The ground as well can be pretty harsh. Here you really have to work for it. You've got a good mix of like crusty old spots that have been rinsed and it's always like a challenge. Mitchell Library handrails which were all resurfaced quite recently um, and they put blind bumps in front of it which was this like it's almost like when they were going to shut down South Bank, you can't do this to like a, an iconic spot. The 50 millimeter yeah, rolls? fire. Yesterday was pretty tight. I mean, we made the best of a situation that like, you know, it's hard to skate in. It was raining all day, it was cold, but still like we definitely got to check out some good stuff. Uh, we went to a rail, sadly like it was kind of dry and then like right when we wanted to like mess around with it, it started raining again, but all good, got eyes on it. Yeah, the weather here is fucking awful. <laughs> I think it like rains every second second. That's like 50% of the time. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a battle with the weather, but there's quite a lot of like undercover spots. Right, we're going to Unit 23 right now. Um, it's like 30 minutes from Glasgow. It's been raining all morning, so it's a little too wet for us to hit the streets. It's the best thing ever, dude. I never see bird water. Oh, you got your It seems like the weather's not as good for skating, but you know, if you skateboard, you're gonna make it happen regardless. Yeah, 
yeah, the loading bay, that that's probably like one of the one of my like favorite parks right now, honestly, because it's just cool. I love how they in, the, how they incorporated the loading dock or the loading bay area into the skate park. They didn't just destroy it and try to figure it out. Like they literally got there, they just put up a wall it looked like, and then built ramps going up to the loading bay. So that was like their like their highest point. So it's like Euro gaps, roll on grinds, rough ledges from the original loading bay. Like it was hella cool. There's a lot of fun. The park itself is amazing. One of the best bowls I've ever skated indoors in my life. Things come and go uh, in terms of not, not quote unquote natural terrain, but the big the big innovation in recent years has been uh, like sort of DIY, um, what Charlie Myatt's done up at the Arches and what the the guys have done over at the, the Kingston. I'm Charles Myatt. I'm a, a skater and an artist. The Arches DIY, the third DIY I've worked on been there for four years. It's called the arches simply because of all the brick arches that are, are built around there. We've, uh, the obstacles in the park, we've got the corner, um, which has got the pool coping on it. We've got one of my favorite pieces is the, uh, the sign for the arches. It's a sandstone block. Me and this guy Emilio like dug out of the hillside and like put in place and around it, it's got this kind of, I call it a sink or the fridge because it's got a plug and sometimes we get the ice and the, and the beers and the waters in there. It's an amazing skate park. It's very seasonal. It's only like there for five months of the year because the winter and the drainage is so bad. And it's good like in the summer when it's all cleaned up and everything. And it's just such a good session. You get a good vibe around there. Recently, skateboarding in Glasgow has been absolutely amazing because of the amount of people picking up skateboarding, the amount of DIYs, there's three DIYs that have been built all within the past 10 years. We are at Kingston DIY in Tradeston in Glasgow. Rowan found it. It was getting quite, it was like winter. He was looking for good places to skate because of the rain. Glasgow's pretty rainy and horrible and miserable. I was looking on a Google map, on Google Earth. You can get like a good 3D view of like the city. I was just looking for underpasses, places that were like sheltered. And he was just kind of going along the road until he found this kind of derelict car park. And then all of a sudden there was just such a big feedback from the community. And so many people were coming and skating just this small little ledge that it really inspired to like build more and more stuff. The pace of sort of development of places like Kingston and, and the Arches in a way I think kind of encapsulates the energy that there is in, in the city. You know, it's a big enough city that there's different crews doing different things. It's incredible the way it's kind of progressed to this point. A lot of people like outside of skateboarding are starting to see how important it is or how good of a thing it is for Glasgow to be picking up skateboarding or rollerblading. Back in my day, we had nothing. We had no skate parks, we had no indoors. We had to find car parks, we had to find places that were undercover. We were getting chased from everywhere. We didn't have money, we didn't have the funding, we didn't have the know-how to build all this kind of stuff.
And so it's, it's the, the idea of things are forever changing and the rate at which they're changing in Glasgow is really exciting because no skateboarder wants to go to the same spot over and over and over again. The Transport Museum, like I said, is, is amazing um, because it's harnessed by, by the people that run it. It's, it's perfect, it's, it dries up really quickly. The, it's a sort of um, tiled ground, so it, it makes that did it, did it, did it noise. <laughs> But it's nice, it's smooth as well, and you don't, it feels a little bit bumpy, but you don't feel it, it's not a bad bump. The architect who designed it, she made it so it was like skate friendly, so it's got the ledges out the front. So that was like the original thing, I think it was there for a good while before they sort of expanded. But there was a bit of a problem arising that you know, some people, some of the younger kids, I think, didn't really get that you were only really meant to skate there in the evenings, kind of once the museum had shut. So there was a bit of a clash at the entrance, and what they wanted to do was not ban skateboarding on site, quite an enlightened position, but have something that they could say to kids when they were skating there during the day, can you go around the corner and use that bit around there? The Transport Museum are so supportive of the skate community and like, they were kind enough to make us like a little skate plaza around the side. They're happy for us to skate around the front and use you know, as, mu as much as a museum as we can because it, it, yeah, I guess it makes a lot of sense if it is like the Museum of Transport like to have skateboarders, rollerbladers, BMXers like, kicking about around it. It just like, adds to you know, what they're already showing. Glasgow skate scene has been friendly. Like since I've moved here, also getting involved with Kingston DIY, I've never felt more at home. The scene is growing in terms of kids starting to skateboard and, and, and getting older and sort of discovering um, new spots and new scenes. Glasgow itself was like named the friendly city in 2015, I think. Yeah, even when people are coming down to the park and aren't skateboarders, like they get to see the skate scene, like the kids like, oh, skateboards, we'll like jump on, like try it, like. This is a lot more females actually skating now too, and they're all skating at a great level, they're all enjoying us here, they've got their own little community as well. It's changed a lot in the years. Since I've started skating, there's a lot more female presence. Yeah, I think that's what like we try to aim to do is like let people know that it is for everyone. The more that that's happened, like the more that kids are going to come down to skate parks and go, like, yo, there's a girl that's like absolutely killing it. Yeah, it just inspires more people to see people like yourself. It's been good. All the DIYs, everybody's really friendly and help each other out. So if we're needing rubble, we'll go down to Arches to help us out. If they need a hand, we'll jump in. It's good. It's a good community. Everyone's like really tight, everyone's really friendly. And then in the last few years, probably because of lockdown, there's like way more skaters now. I think the future in Glasgow is probably getting more opportunities for people to skate. Yeah, the more skaters there are, the more people that see skateboarding and the more people that get into it, like it is like a very inspiring thing, I think. It's really gratifying from somebody whose kind of peak in skateboarding was 20 years ago and at a, at a point when we thought, you know, God, is this going to die out in this city to see how healthy everything is now is, is really, it's a lovely thing. I mean, I'd love to come back and try to get like, you know, a little bit longer of time so that way we can get days like these and try to get some, get some clips of the streets and stuff. I'd describe Glasgow skateboarding using the words. The passionate. Friendly. Creativity. It's onwards and upwards, I can only see you getting better.